I'm going to show you 13 easy to set up shortcuts for the action button on your iPhone 15 Pro. Everything from having this cool shortcuts menu to turning on captions on your Apple TV, start dictating a new note in one press, automatically send a text to someone with the ETA from their location, and you can even have the action button do different things depending on the orientation of your iPhone. All right, let's get into it. At number one, you've probably seen this a lot over on social media, and this is a shortcuts folder being enabled by the action button. To swipe it away, by the way, you have to drag way up. The first thing you'll need to do is actually create a folder in the shortcuts app. If you open shortcuts and then tap the button in the top left, you can create a new folder using this icon. Name the folder whatever you'd like, and then all your folders will appear here. Now if we go to the action button settings, we'll go to the settings app, down to action button, swipe over to where it says shortcut. When we tap this, you'll see this menu pop up and the option to show folder is right here. I'll tap show folder, and then I'm gonna show my folder called the action button. And now when I press the action button, it shows the top seven shortcuts that I placed in that folder. Keep in mind it only shows the top seven and then an open app shortcut. So whatever shortcuts you want to appear in that menu, make sure it's in the first seven here in your shortcuts folder. All right, number two, you can start dictating a note just by the action button. Remind me to watch all the bearded teacher videos in one day. And that creates a new note that I've specified here in the shortcut. To set up a shortcut like this, I'll go to the shortcuts app and here I'm in my action buttons folder. Let's create a new shortcut and let's search for the action dictate. You'll see under the document section, dictate text as an option. Let's expand this with a little arrow. We have our language and then you can also choose when to stop listening. You can choose after pause or you can choose to actually have to press the stop button for it to stop dictating. Then whatever you dictate in that first action, you can choose to create a new note in your app of choice. If you want it to go to Apple Notes, let's just search for notes. We'll go to the notes application. We can choose create note. The body of the note, we're actually gonna choose the dictated text that we had up here. You can choose a note folder to put it in and then to open that note when run. Now you can dictate some text, creates a new note automatically with just the press of the action button. All right, number three, since you're adjusting the action button so often, it might be nice just to be able to hold the action button and jump to the settings menu for the action button. To do this, we use something called a URL scheme. It's a little fancy, you don't have to worry about it. All the shortcuts I'm gonna mention, I'll put links down in the video description. Sometimes the shortcuts gallery acts funny, so if it doesn't let you download, just wait a little bit, come back, watch the video again, you know, and then you can download it. So in order to access the action button settings directly, you need this URL scheme. I'll put this in the video description as well if you just wanna type it out, but prefs colon root equals action underscore button. If you open that link, it will automatically go to the action button settings. You can actually create this with a single step. I'll search for the action open URL, paste that URL directly to the action button settings. Now when I hit play on this shortcut, I jump right here. Number four, you can actually turn the captions to your Apple TV on or off from the action button. Let me jump into shortcuts one more time and let's just create one from scratch. Here I'm gonna search for TV and you'll see we actually have a bunch of controls for our Apple TV remote. One of the actions is set captions. If I tap set captions, I can choose on, off, or ask each time and then it'll say, do you wanna turn it on or off? And then you can choose a specific Apple TV in your house. I can choose from any of the Apple TVs I have and then it will turn on or off captions whenever I run this action. Pretty cool. This next one is called the home ETA shortcut. I used to use this a lot when I didn't work from home. One press and it will get your travel time from your current location back to the home or whatever address you put and then we'll populate that time in a text automatically to whoever you like and you can send it with just a tap. Here's what the shortcut looks like. I'll run it and then we'll build it together. If I hit play, it'll get the current distance to that address that I've put, automatically populate a text and then I'll have it say be home in however many minutes. If you wanna to jump to the next shortcut, just hit the next chapter but if you wanna build this from scratch, search for the address action here in shortcuts and we'll choose street address. Put in your home address or whatever address you'd like to calculate time to, and then you'll see an action here, get travel time. If you don't see it there, you can type in get travel time. And now we wanna choose the method of transportation. We'll do driving from current location, so wherever your phone is, to that street address. And then I'm actually gonna search for the text box action because I wanna customize how the text is sent. I'll put be home in, travel time is just a number. And again, you can choose the different variables down here. And then finally, I'll search for the message action. I'll hit send message, and this will send the text to whatever recipient you'd like. Expand this little arrow here, and you can choose show and run, so you have to confirm before it sends, or turn that off to just send the text. If I run the shortcut, it'll now calculate that distance, and then it auto-populates that text, and I'm ready to send it. All right, if you love podcasts like I do, you can have the action button just play an episode of your favorite podcast. For that, I've created a shortcut, simple one step. I'll search for the podcast action, you can scroll down, choose play podcast, and then you can choose or search for a podcast that you follow. 
Now that it's set as my action button, I can just hold it and my podcast starts playing. I call this shortcut my super mute shortcut. This not only toggles whether your device is muted or not, but also changes the volume for your device. So you make sure that if any video starts playing automatically, it's silent. For this, I actually had to use an action from the Toolbox Pro application. I'll put a link to this application down in the video description, but it adds a bunch of new actions, even things like deduplicating from a list and makes them easily accessible here in shortcuts. I have the action is silent mode on. I change it to text just to make the if statement a little easier. Here I have an if statement, if silent mode is on, then turn silent mode off, meaning now my ringer is on, and I've set my volume to 50%. That action is called media volume. You can search for that and it's the set volume command there. And then otherwise, I'll enable silent mode and set the volume to my device at zero. And one other key action, you can actually set your device to vibrate when this runs. So when it vibrates, I know my phone is on mute. If it doesn't vibrate, when I've hit the action button, I know that volume is on. If I set the super mute for the action button and I hit it, you'll see it changes the volume of my device and my phone is off silent. If I hit it again, it will mute my device, turn the volume all the way down and vibrate the phone to let me know it's confirmed. All right, number eight, I've been using iCloud Keychain more and more, but there's still no standalone app and getting to it in the settings can be cumbersome, but you can create a shortcut that jumps directly to your iCloud passwords. Now there's actually a great shortcut from Federico Vitici at Mac Stories, which has a bunch of if statements and will work both on your Mac, iPhone and iPad. We'll just do a simple one for the iPhone right now. To create this, it's just like accessing the action button settings. I'm just gonna do an open URL command. And then this is the URL scheme to access the passwords. Then when I play this shortcut, it jumps right to my iCloud passwords in one click. If I set it for the action button, now I'm just a click away from my iCloud passwords. Number nine, you can actually wake an Apple TV so it turns on your whole system and go to that remote on your iPhone in one click. To do that, let's create a shortcut and search for TV. Here you have wake Apple TV as a command and then you can choose the specific Apple TV you want to wake up. Then you'll see the suggestion here, show remote control, but we can also search for this action. I'll just search for remote. I'll choose show remote control and then again, choose the same Apple TV. And now my Apple TV will wake up and it'll show the remote on my iPhone in just a click. Now, if you have multiple Apple TVs in your house, you can do something like I've done here, which is to create a menu, put each Apple TV as a choice within that menu, and then add the wake Apple TV and show remote for each specific Apple TV. This way one shortcut can wake any Apple TV in your house and then you're automatically controlling that Apple TV. I also have some HomeKit scenes set in here and my main TV, I actually have a Hue sync box, which I can power on and start the light syncing to the content all here in the shortcut with one press. If I put this shortcut for the action button, you'll see the menu pop up. I can choose the room where I'm watching. It'll run the HomeKit scenes, show the Apple TV remote and I'm good to go. I can choose a room and now it automatically opens the remote app on my phone and wakes that Apple TV. You can also create another shortcut, which I have here called done watching. And this will actually put an Apple TV to sleep and then turn off the TV. So if I select that same room, now I know that that TV is off. Number 10, if you have lots of HomeKit scenes like I do, and some of those favorites even get buried, you can just put them right here in a menu as a shortcut. For instance, I have here my HomeKit scenes. And if I open the shortcut, you see I've put some of my favorite scenes in a menu command. And under each menu command, you can choose a set home control and then set a scene. I'll give you one more example. Maybe I want to add an action called living room movie that turns on my Apple TV. I'll add that option to the menu. Let me scroll all the way down. I'll search for home control and you'll see control home right here. This will give you access to all those smart devices and scenes. Let me drag this into the menu. Then I can tap here and have access to all the scenes. Living room movie is actually a scene I already have programmed. I can hit next. It enables that scene. And now that's an option here in the menu. If I program that to the action button and click it, now I can just choose some of my top HomeKit scenes right from the menu. Number 11, if you have a bunch of HomePods around the house, you can actually program intercom commands, which will broadcast messages to select HomePods or all of them. And you can even have Siri speak text, so you don't even have to dictate it. Here in my intercom shortcut, I have a bunch of options here in the menu. And then under each option, there's actually an intercom command. You can type the text here and then choose what home pods this message is sent to. Maybe you need to tell everyone it's time to go. So I'm gonna create a menu option, we have to go. Let's scroll down to the bottom. There's my final menu command, we have to go. Let me search for intercom. I'll just type the text here, we have to go. And then here I can choose what home pods or AirPlay 2 devices I want this to broadcast to. Maybe I just wanna send it to my boy's room or I can send it to every home pod in the house by choosing the Robles home. For even more advanced control over intercom, you can add a secondary menu. And here I can choose a room which to send that message and then add an action to every one of those menu options to send my message or text to that specific room. 
All right, number 11, you might have seen that you can actually have the action button do different things depending on the orientation of your device. To enable this, you actually need a third-party app. I'll put a link to this in the video description as well. And this can actually surface way more device information. So I've added a get device orientation. This is an action from that third-party application. And then you can choose if device orientation is, and you have these options. You could do portrait, portrait upside down, landscape left, right, face up, or face down. Then you can choose what action is run depending on the orientation. So I've set up some if statements here, and it's actually running some of my other shortcuts depending on orientation. So if device is portrait upside down, which might be if it's in your pocket and you're not looking at it, but you know it's face down. So if your phone is in your pocket, but it's upside down, then it will run this action, which is my super mute, turning the volume off, vibrating the device if it's muting. If my device is in portrait mode, like in normal operation, it's gonna show me my action button menu with a bunch of other options. And if my device is in landscape left, it's gonna open the camera because I'm probably holding it to take a picture. So I'll set that action orientation to the action button. And now let's see what it does. So if I'm in portrait mode, like normal operation, and I hold the action button, it'll then show me the menu. If it's upside down, like in my pocket, and I hold the action button, it's gonna run my super mute shortcut. There mute is off and it raised the volume. If I run it again, now my device is muted and the volume's down. And if I hold it in landscape mode and hit the action button, it's gonna open the camera. That's pretty cool, not gonna lie. And number 13, you can actually have the action button prompt chat GPT with whatever you wanna say. So to create an action like this, you can actually just use the chat GPT built-in action. If you install the chat GPT app, I'll put the link in the description. I could choose the ask chat GPT action. I can have it ask each time whatever I wanna text. Hit that arrow to open this menu and I'm gonna start a new chat each time. Show and run, cause I wanna see the message and you can choose the model, I'll go with ChatGPT4. If you want, you can also combine this with the dictate action, and then I'll choose for the dictated text to be the prompt for ChatGPT. I've set that for my action button, and now when I hit the action button, who is the best tech YouTuber with a beard? Unfortunately, not me just yet. So those are 13 shortcut ideas for your action button. If you wanna learn more about creating menus and even have a change function depending on focus mode, check out my video right here. And if you have a new iPhone 15 or 15 Pro, that USB-C port actually does a whole lot. I plugged in a bunch of things, even connecting my iPhone to a studio display, which actually works. You can see everything I did here in this video. Also like, subscribe, comment if you have questions on shortcuts you would like to build for the action button. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.